Hi, I'm Anthony Seller, and in this video, we are going to put forward some examples on how to compute confidence on tables, confidence rectangles, and confidence ellipsoids well. In this 2D case, we'll just speak about confidence ellipse in a multivariate normal distribution. So, in our example, if we start with some standard normal distribution, we'll later on change to other possibilities, then this is the probability density function for that standard normal. So its contours, its equal probability density, are circles. The goal of this video is somehow discussing confidence regions. Say, if I wish to compute which is the probability of this rectangle, let's say, then I would need to integrate in this rectangle the probability density function. If I integrate everywhere, it gives 1, and then in this rectangle, let's say, it can result in 15%, let's say, probability. But as computing confident regions is a very common problem, and confidence intervals or joint confidence intervals, so confident rectangles, and well, sort of confident circles, maybe, then, okay, those computations are tabulated and programmed in basically all relevant statistical software. So let us now discuss these concepts via this example. The first thing we wish to discuss is that, well, okay, in many problems, we wish to compute confidence regions so that we can cram together as many points as possible in the sense that, okay, I am happier saying that this blue region has 15% chance that a random sample lands into it. Then I am happier with this blue region than with this red rectangle because, well, this somehow gives me much more information. Unless this red rectangle is something particularly special on my problem, usually my goal is given a confidence level, which usually is 95% or 99%. I wish to give the confidence region with the smallest possible area. And then the shape of that region will be a circle, because imagine that I have this blue circle, I am thinking on increasing the probability count of the region by enlarging the region, then imagine that I temporarily decide to add this half circle so that I get up from 15% to 17%. Then the next idea would be, okay, what would you prefer to add to increase the probability of your region to 20%? Would you prefer adding this circle or adding the remaining part of the yellow circle? Well, the choice is clear. The yellow stuff has more probability density than the red region. So it will add more probability per square meter, let's say, than the red region. So if I wish to output a confident region, which is the smallest possible one, the shape has clearly to be a circular shape. So the confident region for a given confidence with a smaller area will be a circle. But okay, you know, maybe rectangles are of interest in some of my applications or intervals, marginal intervals. So we'll discuss in my example both circles and rectangles. And well, if I now change to a diagonal covariance matrix so that the standard deviation of x1 is 1 and the standard deviation of x2 is 2 because variance is square of standard deviation and it has squared meter units, well, if I get this, then circles will become ellipses and the thing is that we are going to multiply some probabilities 
later on. So if my covariance matrix is not diagonal, it means that my variables are correlated, are not statistically independent, and then some multiplications of probability would be wrong if I chose this covariance matrix. But okay, in this case, I have two normal variables that are independent of each other, but you know, just stacked together to form a 2D normal variable, and the results will still be valid. So if we move to this covariance matrix, then this thing will be an ellipse because, you know, I am just multiplying my previous computations by two in the vertical axis. And here we have equal density contours being ellipses. And so the minimum area region for a given confidence will have ellipsoidal form, accumulating as much density as possible, starting in, you know, concentric ellipses around the origin. But for simplicity, I'll stick to the circular shape standard normal distribution just to see circles instead of ellipses, because all the results will be equally valid just rescaling the vertical axis. Here we have the circle equal density contours again, standard deviations, square root of the corresponding element of the diagonal matrix are 1, and then our confidence region, well, I will get a 95% confidence as my goal, let's say. I will fail in my predictions so that 1 in 20 samples of my bivariate normal distribution will be outside the confidence regions I am going to draw. If I study each of the variables just individually without thinking on the relationship with the other one, then 1.96 times the standard deviation is the confidence interval for a single normal variable. If I wished 99% confidence, then it will be plus minus 2.56 standard deviations. But let us keep 95%. So it's plus minus two standard deviations, and as we are discussing just standard normals, then we are, you know, times one. This is if I studied each of the variables independently of the other, what we call a marginal analysis. And that will depict the plus minus 1.96 horizontal and vertical bands in pink and the cyan greenish stripes vertical and horizontal lines. We'll analyze this figure later on. The second thing we are going to compute is the confidence circle we see here, the minimum area region. And that thing is compute with the Tier squared distribution in this way in the statistics toolbox of MATLAB. I put the dimensionality of my normal variable, in this case 2, I put here the confidence level and then g squared inverse gives me this result. The probability that x1 squared plus x2 squared being x1 and x2 standard normal less than 5.9915 is equal to the confidence value 0.95. So the g squared is the uh, probability behavior of the sum of squared normal distributions and well you know it, it was invented because given the circular contours of my density function the optimal confidence regions will have this bound and then bounding that motivated the study of the g squared behavior so the thing is that then the square of the normals will be less than six more or less, but okay, this 5.99 has squared meters, let's say, units, so the things we see as lengths in my plots, the radius of the circle, will be computed by just saying that this 5.99 will be the radius of the circle squared, so that radius is 2.44, the square root of 6. 
then the circle with 95% confidence will have 2.44 as radius and its area it will be well pi radius squared so 6 pi so it will be 18.8 the formula I wrote here is the general case when I have a whole ellipse but you know for simplicity if you just think in the circular case we are considering is just pi radius square of course so the 95% confident region with smaller area is this circle and the area is 18.8 let us now compute confidence rectangles and check that the area is of course greater than 18.8 so if I go back let's say to my master figure this band roughly plus minus 2 is the 95% confidence interval for x2 and that band is the 95% confidence interval for x1 indeed the 2d interpretation is that the pink vertical lines indicate a band in which x1 is between plus minus 1.96 and x2 is anywhere plus minus infinity so the marginal single variable confidence interval must be depicted in 2d as a band stretching to infinity in the variable we are not considering of course if we consider the region now between the pink stripes with 95 percent probability if we require x2 to be in something smaller than plus minus infinity then the probability will be lower so for instance if we require x1 to be between plus minus 196 and x2 to be between plus minus 196 then the probability of this pink rectangle as they are independent variables will be the product of probabilities and it will be 0.95 squared gives me this 90% confidence rectangle so if I make some calculations assuming that my first variable is in plus minus 1.96 that will be true 19 out of 20 times and I also assume that the second variable is into plus minus 196 which will be also true 19 out of 20 however if I need both things to happen for a given computation to be valid then that will be true only 90% of the times and not 95% so which will be the actual 95% probability rectangle which I draw in dark pink this one well the one computed with the a square root of 0 0.95 which is this value we'll see it in a minute roughly if I compute the 97 point something confidence interval then when I multiply them together they will give me the actual 95% confidence rectangle let's see it in MATLAB this is the square root of the confidence 0.9747 so it is this confidence level that must enter in this way to the inverse cumulative normal computations to get me the 2.24 standard deviations that give me the marginal 97.5% confidence interval and then when I multiply that I get the 95% confidence rectangle in two variables which is the one I depicted here in dark pink so we see the 90% and 95% confidence rectangles and then we'll speak about the green one in a minute we'll just check that the area of the dark pink rectangle 95% than the area of the circle indeed the confidence rectangle even in the ellipsoidal diagonal but not identity covariance matrix will be this rectangle and the area will be you know the width is just twice 
times 2.23 sigma 1 and likewise with the height so the product of this thing will be well 2 squared sigma 1 sigma 2 and uh, 2.23 confidence bounds so it gives an area of 20 that indeed as intuitively expected it is larger than the area of the confidence circle g squared 18.8 because our computations confirm our intuition that if I add this region and I remove this corner from my probability region, confidence will be the same but with a smaller area. And indeed, if I do that four times, the portion inside the circle highlighted in blue accumulates the same probability than the portion of the rectangle in red but the blue stuff has smaller area we computed it confirming our intuition so this is why in most multivariate statistics with a normal distribution the only confident region we discuss it's you know this circle then what's the green rectangle well the green rectangle is the rectangle that includes the circle and it has 97 percent probability because the radius of the circle is it's 2.45 roughly if i do this computation with the 196 confidence interval then i recover the 95 percent confidence and if i instead do that computation with that 2.45 radius of the circle if i had a single random variable with that distance to the mean it will have a 98.56% confidence interval and if I require the confidence rectangle for two of the variables then I need to square that number and I get the 97% confidence value for the rectangle that has its width equal to the diameter of the 95% confidence circle. So we get this 97% green rectangle here. All the computations we have done, you can download the code. And if we repeat it for the non-identity but diagonal covariance matrix, so variables keep independent and correlated, then all calculations will be exactly the same, but you know, zooming up in a factor of two, which is the standard deviation, the vertical axis of everything. So we'll get this confidence ellipse and the 90, 95 and 97% rectangles we computed are the light pink, dark pink and green ones respectively. And if I wish to discuss the 95% marginal confidence bands, confidence interval when I just look at one variable, then we have them in the pink vertical lines for the first variable or the cyan greenish horizontal line for the second variable. One will be 1.96 and the vertical one will be just 1.96 times 2. So we finish with this. Thanks for watching.